What's up guys, Gums and welcome back to another video and welcome back to a new series on the channel that is not PCM related for once. We are delving in into actual cycling for once um, and this is the start of the 2022 previews ahead of the new season of cycling uh, with on the 11th of January. The season technically begins on the 30th with the uh, opening Grand Prix of La Marseillaise. So I reckon we could just storm through the previews of the team very quick, very rapid, around five minutes-ish per team, hopefully daily, um, just so that you guys could get into the new season. We'll start today with the almighty Team DSM, uh, the team from the Netherlands who's had quite a shocking 2021, as you're going to be able to see now, because last year... There is only eight wins for uh, the uh, Dutch outfit. Uh, two wins in the World Tour on uh, the Vuelta. Uh, the four winners are as follows. Roman Bardet, Michael Stara, Nikas Arndt and Kiesbol. Uh, Michael Stara with four wins. Roman Bardet with two wins. Arndt and Bol respectively with one win each. Um, making them 21st in the UCI ranking. Ranking last out of every single World Tour team. Even behind a team such as Kubeka who well, I mean, don't, doesn't exist anymore. Um, and mainly, half their wins comes from a guy who left the team. So that's not exactly good now, is it? Because if we take a look at the transfers, uh, also, yes, I'm running a PowerPoint presentation. What are you going to do? <laughs> There's been quite a lot of movement. And once again, DSM was in the news for having weird transfers and riders wanting to opt out of their contracts. One of the riders uh, is Ilan Van Vilda, who left to join the Canonk Quick Step. Oh, sorry. Uh, what is it called now? Quick Step Alpha Veno. Um, that is also the case for Tish Benot, who opted out of his uh, multi year contract to um, join the Dota outfit of Jumbo Vesma. Uh, leaving the team also, Nicola Roche or Nicholas Roche retiring Jai Hindley, uh, who could not capitalize on his 2020 Giro. Michael Stora, who is left to go to FDG, Chad Hega, Joshua Sutelin, Max Kansa, and uh, Felix Gall complete the uh, list of riders leaving as Martin Salmon retires from cycling at the age of 24. And if we take a look at their signings, um, yeah, so unless you're a PCM player, you should know one rider, and that is John Dignicol. Going back home, uh, he left, uh, I mean, he left Project T141. I think that became Argos, and he was still there at Argos. And I think he left around that time. But he goes back to uh, his maiden team. He was at Turinga before. Uh, he's joined by Jonas Iversby-Fedeberg, Henry van der Nabella, Leon Heischke, Frederik Rodenberg, Marius Meyerhofer, Sam Wellesford, and uh, Team Nabermann. Actually, it's Sam Wellesford because he's not German. Uh, most of their signings come from their development team. I think Sam also comes from a youth team. Um, Jonas Wedeberg comes from Uno X, um, but transfer-wise, it's, it's shocking. Now, we know that um, historically, DSM counts a lot on their young rider. Um, that was the case. I mean, Ilan Van Velda, Mark Hirschi, um, who else? Case Ball, I think he's like a youth prospect from their ranks. I mean, they, have, they know how to build a, a rider. They just don't know how to keep them, uh, which is probably why they're ranking so low. And that is also one of the main issues with this team is that I don't exactly know where they're going. If I have one rider to watch for next year, uh, out of the obvious, um, that would be Roman Bardet, I'm going to go for Andras Leknesund. Um, he's joined the team last year from Uno X. Uh, did not really have the best of seasons. Uh, he's yet to start a Grand Tour, but he's a time travel specialist. That can go well in the mountain. I believe he got seventh on the Arctic race of Norway. And I think he got a top 10 on the Queen stage of the Tour de Suisse or Tour de Romandie. One of the two, I can't exactly remember. Um, but he's shown that he can climb. Uh, he's now in a team that basically has nobody able to go over a single hill except Romain Bardet. Um, I mean, sure, there's, there's some riders that can climb, right? But Andreas Leknesund is soon going to become one of the best riders in this team, um, which probably says a lot about the team in itself. And I would like to see him start a Grand Tour. Um, there was a lot of comparison like two years ago with a certain Tobias Foss. Tobias Foss doesn't have the chance and opportunities that, I mean, DSM could give Lechnesund, um, but he still managed to 
I mean, show his capacity and show that he's a decent rider. Lake Nesund has to capitalize on today's uh, or on this year's season. He's a two-time Norwegian time trial champion. Uh, he's won the Giro del Friuli in 2020, ahead of some riders such as Henry van Annabella. So yeah, I think he's the one to watch. Uh, but the ambitions of DSM this year, they're quite low. I'm going to guess a few top 10s on classics. Stage wins here and there with Dinesa and Kisbol. That's about it, right, isn't it? I mean, Bard is probably going to the Giro, so you're going to expect a top 5, or at least hope for a top 5, uh, until the day where Roman probably has an issue, just like he does on every single race, and ends up P7 behind, like, I don't know, Joao Almeida, who would have overperformed. Rating of DSM, we're going to do that for every single team. 2021 season, I gave her a 2 out of 5. Um, I mean, they had wins on La Vuelta. Roman Bardet got his first ever leader's jersey, so I can't, like, slew the season. It wasn't the worst, especially, com like, that's in regards, or with regards, sorry, to their lineup. The main disappointment in 2021 probably was Zoran Kraft Anderson. Um, but it's still a Twitter start. Transfers, I give it a 1. I just just don't back it. I, I just don't. My apologies to, to everyone that signed for DSM. Uh, ambitions, again, two out, of start, 2 out of 5. What do you want to give? What is the ambition of DSM? I don't know. And finally, we're going to rate the kit. I don't exactly, it, it doesn't really have a value. I mean, it shouldn't have a value, but it does in my final ranking. Um, it's the same kit as last year. Uh, I believe last year I gave it a 6. This year I'm going to give it a 5. Uh, I'll, I'll like take one point out for the lack of, of innovation. So it's a 2 out of 5. Um, well, 2.5 out of 5, sorry, for the kit. Meaning that we're going to start these previews with a 1.75 for the team DSM. I don't know what team tomorrow it will be, but it probably is a team who's got a kit somewhat outrageous that nobody likes for very good reasons. And they may have signed a former world champion, no, former European champion, there we go, who, just like they called, is looking for new fitness and a renewal in his life otherwise is the end of the season and his career. All right, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Um, if you like this concept, let me know in the comments, that would mean a lot to me. And I will see you in the very near future. My name is Guillaume. Have an amazing day. See ya. Pass me the funk. Get your funk on, girl. And don't you ever let Pass it me the go. Funk. We're getting drunk in here. And what comes next?